Okay, time to take a quiz over what you've learned today. So question number one, use the equation for gravitational force to explain what happens to the force of gravity between two objects if A, the mass of one of them increases. So we're gonna write down the force of gravity is gonna be equal to big G, M1, M2, divided by R squared. So if the mass of one of the objects gets bigger, then the force gets bigger. On part B, it says what happens if the distance increases. So if the R gets bigger, it's in the bottom part of the formula, then the force of gravity gets smaller. Question number two, what is a gravitational field and what creates it? So a gravitational field is gonna be a region of space that is going to uh, surround a mass. Um, so the Earth has a certain mass and then that is creating its gravitational field. And then the idea though is if you take another mass and you place it into this gravitational field, it then experiences a gravitational force. What variables determine the gravitational potential energy of an object? Okay, so this was the, the one where it was uh, the energy E uh, is going to be equal to um, minus, and then it was big G, M1, M2, divided by R, not R squared. So the variables are gonna be the mass of the object that's going around, and then it's gonna be the mass of the thing it's going around, uh, and then it's also gonna depend on the distance between the two objects. Number four, what variables determine how long it takes a planet to orbit a star. So this is Kepler's blank law. Which one is it? Kepler's third law. So this is gonna be the one that says that the period squared is gonna be equal to the semi-major axis cubed, or really, it's just gonna be the radius cubed. Uh, and now if the question had been according to Kepler, then the answer would be distance. But we know, according to Sir Isaac Newton, that it also is gonna depend on the total mass of the system. So it would depend on the mass of the star plus the mass of the thing that is going around. So when you add those two together, that's the total mass. So those would be the variables that determine the time, the period that it takes to orbit. Number five, what determines whether or not a rocket ship can escape our solar system? So it all comes down to a competition between kinetic energy and gravity. So the kinetic energy is gonna depend on speed. So energy, kinetic, is one half mv squared. So it's gonna depend on the speed. This is gonna determine how big the kinetic energy is going to be. On the other hand, the potential energy is this one, and it is going to depend on the distance, and it's also gonna depend on the mass of the star and the mass of the object that's trying to escape. So if this term is winning, meaning this term is bigger than this term, then it escapes. And so uh, if this term is bigger than this term, then it can't escape and it has a elliptical orbit. And if the two of them are exactly the same, then it does escape but it has a particular kind of orbit, the parabolic. So if it really escapes, if this one is bigger than this one, 
that was the hyperbolic orbit. And then number six, why does a planet orbit a star according to general relativity? It's because it's following the curvature of space and time caused by the mass of the star. The mass of the star is going to bend space and time and then an object will follow that curvature of space and time. That's completely different than Sir Isaac Newton. So Sir Isaac Newton would say a planet orbits a star because it is experiencing a force. Sir um, Einstein never used that concept. So instead of using the word force, Einstein just said the curvature of space and time caused by the mass of the star. So there you have it. All right, we're all finished. And so in our next lesson, we are going to talk about nuclear power and nuclear energy. See you then.